The death of Stephen Bonner is a huge loss to the MMA community. He was an important figure in the sport, and his contributions to MMA will never be forgotten. But what is it about Bonner that makes him a historical figure in the world of MMA? Let's take a look at Bonner's fighting career. First thing first, Stephen Bonner, aka the American Psycho, wasn't just an aggressive striker with a black belt in jiu-jitsu. He was also a witty public speaker who was a natural on the microphone. At the beginning of his career, despite losing a split decision to Forrest Griffin in the TUF one finale, the UFC gave him a six-figure contract. Why? Because of his extraordinary performance. From then on, he fought 15 fights in the UFC, creating a record of 7 and 8. And what's more, out of all 8 fights that he lost during his time at UFC, 7 of his opponents had already put their names in the UFC Hall of Fame. And I'm talking about big names like John Jones, Rashad Evans, Griffin, and Anderson Silva. Not to mention, his only loss as a non-Hall of Famer was to Krzysztof Szczęsny. Szczęsny with a left on the break, and here's the big straight left hand, oh. Krzysztof Szczęsny. But then again, he defeated Szczęsny in a rematch. Plus, Bonner really only lost once in his pre-UFC days, dropping a bout at Jungle Fight 1 to Lyoto Machida. By doing so, Bonner ended his MMA career with a staggering record of 15 and 9. John Jones just looked up at the clock, looking to find the energy to push forward. Bonner turning it up right. What's more, after his retirement, Bonner even tried his hand at professional wrestling for a while, but the limitations there didn't sit well with the American Psycho. Anyway, there's one Stephen Bonner fight in particular that really changed the whole course of MMA, and that's none other than the infamous Bonner vs. Griffin bout. Bonner and Griffin's fight is the first thing that comes to mind when his name is mentioned. In fact, he himself was surprised at the amount of fame the fight brought to him. What's more, according to Bonner, that fight really changed everything for him. Before it, fighting was just a mere hobby for him, and he'd never even imagined having a career at UFC. In an interview, he said, Almost overnight, I became like a celebrity. Everywhere I went, someone would recognize me, even in obscure places. It was wild. Not to mention, the fight with Griffin was the one that saved the UFC. At the time, the UFC was on life support in North America. What is keeping To add, the trio ownership of Dana White and the Fertitta brothers, Lorenzo and Frank, had lost millions upon millions of dollars in their five-year stewardship with the failing brand. Around that time, the MMA sport was haunted by the accusations of human fighting. Both hooks in, and Nichols tries to defend. He tries to keep his chin tucked in there, but Bonner just squeezes it. And the charming light heavyweights became a guiding light when The Ultimate Fighter aired worldwide in 2005. What's more, it was a bout between two college-educated friends whose wit, intelligence, and charm put a more relatable face to an industry tarnished by the claims of barbarism. I hear Eric Schaefer's just covering up. I mean, he's already dazed, already hurt, and lo looking for a way out of this. And the Ultimate Fighter is often credited with salvaging a dying UFC, and it certainly kickstarted the process of dispelling the claims of barbarism. Speaking of Stephen Bonner's iconic moments, I can't miss out on his jaw-dropping rematch with Krzysztof Szczęsny. Well, Bonner's career will be remembered not just for his wins and losses, but for what he brought to the octagon night in and night out. He's just yanking it up and back, and that is a bad position. Picture, that is his left elbow. Think about that. So, after a disappointing loss at light heavyweight and talk of a drop down to middleweight, Bonner faced Szczęsny in an epic battle at UFC 110. And even though Szczęsny emerged victorious, a controversial cut caused by a clash of heads left fans questioning the outcome. But Bonner didn't back down. He fought for what he believed in and appealed the decision. And fast forwarding to UFC 116, Bonner and Szczęsny stepped into the octagon once again for the highly anticipated rematch. And this time, Bonner came out on top with a second round TKO after catching Szczęsny with a knee. Huge knee, right on the jaw. Szczęsny crumples and he just jumps all over him. And the win broke Bonner's three-fight losing streak and earned him and Szczęsny fight of the night honors. What's more, following the match, the American psycho walked right into the octagon all drenched in blood and gave the camera a good defiant stare. Of course, this moment showcased what it meant to be a fighter, and Bonner's self-effacing attitude only added to the appeal of the moment. I thought it would look pretty cool, he said. I was kind of making a statement like, yeah, you can hit me all you want, but I'm not going anywhere. Head movement and to utilize the uppercut as 
as Szynski charges in, he does there. So Szynski still teeing off, Joe. Talk about a fighter who won't back down. Speaking of which, against all odds, in his last UFC bout, Bonner faced the king, Anderson Silva. His last match at UFC was a rather hurried and hurdled one. But of course, even on short notice, Bonner faced the king, Anderson Silva, in the main event of UFC 153. It's really unusual the way he can ragdoll people around. The Rich Franklin fight is a, no a good example of that. What's more, the fight ended a nearly year-long semi-retirement in which he told himself that he would only come back for a big fight. And, of course, this was a big fight. At that time, Anderson was a force to be reckoned with, and facing him would have meant a huge deal. He's standing there on the cage, on purpose. Wow. So, for Stefan Bonner, at the age of 35, it was an opportunity to prove himself and leave behind a legacy. But like many great fighters before him who faced Silva, Bonner came up short. In fact, in his 25 years as an MMA fighter, it was the first time that he was getting stopped in the first round without it being due to any injury. Trips him and then grabs the ankle. Now checks his, here it is. Boom, perfectly in the solar plexus. You see Bonner react. But despite the defeat, what mattered the most to the fans was the fact that Bonner showed up and did what he said he would do. He came to fight and faced the music even when the odds weren't in his favor. That's some real sportsmanship and Bonner exhibited all of it. Looking towards the fight itself rather than the outcome of it and holding your head right up when it's over. From every single opponent he's ever faced, crumples under one brilliant blow by the master. It's this attitude of Bonner that got the world respecting him throughout his career and made him a fan favorite. Following the match with Silva, on October 30th, 2012, UFC President Dana White announced that Bonner was hanging up his gloves and retiring from MMA competition. Shortly after his and his iconic nemesis Griffin's retirement, Dana White announced that both fighters' names would be inducted into the UFC Hall of Fame. But one thing remained a constant in his life even years after his retirement, and that's his inability to give up. And that's what he showcased even on his deathbed, when he was admitted to a hospital for the treatment of staph infection. After a challenging year battling a staph infection that left him hospitalized, Bonner appeared to be on the road to recovery. He was in better spirits and seemed to be making progress. What's up? Five days in the hospital now. I was really out of it. Uh... Passed away due to complications with his heart. It was a sudden and untimely loss that deeply affected those who knew him. And as one would expect of him, despite the difficulties he faced, Bonner remained positive and determined to overcome his health issues. So while his passing is a loss to all who knew him and loved him, he'll always be remembered for the legacy that he left behind. Bonner's death is a huge loss to the MMA community. In fact, he was a crucial figure in the sport and his contributions to MMA are just too many. So, of course, there is a reason UFC President Dana White, for all his bombast and revisionism, has long regarded Bonner as being one half of the most important fight in UFC history. He was surely one of a kind, and his role in turning the sport into what it is today will always be remembered. That's all from me on Stephen Bonner's amazing legacy. See you in the next video.